So in this video, we're going to kick off our discussion on the creation of corridors in Civil 3D. But before we can create any corridors, we first have to have the backbone to a corridor, which is an assembly. So we're going to go ahead and create three different assemblies for our drawing. And in order to create assemblies, what you have to do is you need to navigate up to the home tab of the ribbon bar, get into the create design section and drop down the assembly tab. From here, we're going to go ahead and select create assembly. And inside of here, we're going to choose a name. So we're going to create three of them. I'm going to call one of them dev no target. We're going to create a dev no target, a dev target, and then a cul-de-sac. So I'm going to do dev no target now. We're going to go with basic and all codes. So this is the assembly style, and there are code sets associated with assemblies. So the code sets have to deal with certain links and points inside of our assembly. And I'll show you in a second what those links and points are, and then we can deal with these later. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so what Civil 3D is now going to ask me to do is specify an assembly baseline location. An assembly baseline is basically where you build your assembly off of. So where you're going to link that assembly onto your alignment. So we're going to go ahead and select below our profile. And Civil 3D automatically zooms in on this baseline for us because as you'll see in a little bit, when we zoom out, these baselines are pretty small. So to build off of this baseline, the next thing we need to do is we need to open a new toolbar that we haven't used before. And up inside of your palettes window, you're going to go ahead and click on this tool palettes button. And inside the tool palettes button, you're going to get a new window that looks like this. And it has assembly pieces, so sub-assemblies. So inside of here, under common assemblies, you can pick fully created roads and just select them and then change the parameters and place them into your drawing. And that's great for some instances if you need to do something very fast. But for our application, we have a very specific roadway. So we're going to go ahead and go into this basic Imperial basic sub assemblies section. And so where I'm going to do is I'm going to build this based off of basic lane first. Basic lane doesn't have any targets. It's just a width depth and slope requirements. So every time you select one of these objects, this parameter window shows up over here with all the different parameters for the subassembly piece that you've just selected. So I'm going to select basic lane. I'm going to start working from the baseline and go right. And so these are being built as you're driving down the center line of your road. So we're going to go to the right first. We're going to go at a width of, we know our road is 15 feet wide. I'm not going to change the depth and I'm going to leave the slope as negative 2%. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and get back into my drawing window and I'm going to select my baseline. I can select anywhere on this baseline and it will place my basic lane at the center point of that baseline. So I selected the baseline, it placed my lane in here. And so when I was talking about the code sets for this assembly, we talked, I talked about saying links and points and shapes. So inside of this, if you zoom in closely, it's a little hard to see at the top here, but at the bottom, you can see it very well. There's a line here that's in yellow, and then there's a purple shape. So you have links, which are the lines, you have shapes, which are the colors, and then you have points, which are these round circles here. And so all of these code to a specific point on your corridor when you build your corridor. So we're going to go ahead and now choose a curb to go into our road. So I'm going to select a curb. I'm going to make sure it's on the right side. And then I'm going to check my settings. I'm going to have a gutter width of 1.5 feet and a curb width of 0.5 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and select this upper point here. That's my link point for my subassembly. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And it now places a curb in for me. Now I'm going to go to a basic sidewalk. I'm going to go here, select basic sidewalk. I'm going to go scroll down and I'm going to look at the side to make sure I'm on the right. And then I'm going to look at the width. I know that I have enough distance in my alignment to be able to go from my center line to my property boundary and have a eight foot sidewalk in here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my width to eight feet. I'm going to leave the depth as 0.33. I'm not going to change the buffer widths or anything like that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then I'm going to place my sidewalk at the top of the curb here. And then the last thing that we have to do 
in order to be able to make this corridor tie to our existing surface is to add in some form of a cut and fill slope. So I'm gonna go with a basic side slope cut ditch and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the parameters. And so inside of these parameters, this one is a little more in depth. We have cut slopes and fill slopes and what those slope ratios are. We have a four slope ratio and a four slope width. And so the four slopes and the bottom widths and the back slopes all have to do with this ditch, this, this basic side slope and cut ditch. So when you're cutting, this entity will create a ditch in your cut section. So if I don't want to have that ditch, because I know that I'm going to be very close to the existing surface, what I can go ahead and do is I can change these four slope widths and bottom widths and back slope widths. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to change all of these to zero. And that way it doesn't matter what my four slope slopes are and my back slope slopes are, I'm just going to have zero. So they'll never show up. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those in. And then I'm going to select the edge of my sidewalk and it's gonna place in this entity that looks like my cut slope layout mode and my fill slope layout mode. Now from here, what you can do is I could go back and I could do all of these objects and build them to the left, like I did to this and built it to the right. Or what you can do is right, or you can drop a window across all of these and then you can right click and you can choose to mirror. And so if I choose mirror, and then it will ask me to select a marker point within assembly for mirrored subassemblies. And if I select the baseline, it will mirror my road about the center. So moving on from here, I'm gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna get out of that window completely. I'm gonna go back into my assemblies. I'm gonna create another assembly. I'm gonna create a dev target because when we're building our corridors, we're gonna talk about building a corridor with no targets, and then we're gonna talk about building a corridor with targets. So we're gonna do a dev target. I'm gonna leave all these options the same. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna place a new location for a new baseline right here. Civil 3D zooms in for me. I open my tool palettes. I'm gonna go ahead, go back up. Now I'm gonna use this basic lane transition. And from here, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna set my default parameters but we're gonna end up using targets. So this default width isn't necessarily that big of a deal. But the one thing I do need to make sure I'm gonna to do to make sure my targets work correctly is set this transition here to this bottom choice, which is change offset and elevation. You have an option for hold offset and elevation, hold elevation, change offset, hold grade, change offset, and hold offset, change elevation. We wanna change both the offset and the elevation because we're gonna base it on an alignment with a profile. So we wanna change the location and the elevation for our targets. So we're gonna go ahead and select change offset and elevation, and we're gonna build to the right, and we're gonna insert at the crown. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. Then we're gonna to go to our curb and gutter again, and we're gonna to go to the right, and we're gonna build it off the top. And then we're gonna to go to our sidewalk. And we're gonna make sure that our width is set to eight feet. So we're gonna set our width for our sidewalk at eight feet. And we're gonna place it on the back of the sidewalk. And then we're gonna to go to our basic side slope cut ditch. And we are going to scroll down and set our four slope width to zero, our bottom width to zero, and our back slope width to zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the back of my sidewalk. And then I'm gonna get out of this, drop a window across, right click, mirror, select my baseline. And now I have my non-targeted and my targeted. Now we're gonna go through one last item. We're gonna create an assembly for our cul-de-sac. And so this is a more advanced method of creating assemblies, but we'll use that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and call my, sub or my assembly cul-de-sac. And then I'm gonna leave all of my assembly styles and my code set styles the same. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna place my baseline. Civil 3D is gonna zoom me in. I'm gonna open my tool palette again. This time I'm gonna do a basic lane transition, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build it to the right from here. I'm gonna place it in at 15 feet, even though we're gonna use the target, but I'm gonna change my default slope to two instead of negative two. And I'm also gonna change it to change offset and elevation. Now, the other thing that we're changing now is we are gonna be building this from an edge of travelway. So I'm gonna change my crown to edge of travelway, and then I'm going to select my alignment baseline. So now I'm placing my lane in here. 
I'm now gonna go and select by curve and gutter, but because we're gonna be placing this roadway based off of the edge of pavement, we're gonna place our gutter on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna select my side, I'm gonna go to left, and then I'm gonna leave everything else the same, and I'm gonna select my baseline. And then I'm gonna go to my sidewalk. I'm going to build to the left. I'm gonna put in a width of eight feet, and then I'm gonna place it on the back of my curb. And then I'm gonna to go to my basic side slope cut ditch. I'm gonna modify my widths to zero for four slope, zero for bottom, and zero for back slope width. And then I'm going to place it on the back of my sidewalk and I am going to hit enter. And you'll see why this works out when we build our corridor in an advanced mode, but we are going to not need an entire road to build this section of our roadway.